do in your very original ways of thinking about biology in terms of self-organization, uh, criticality, dynamic systems in, uh, in genetic networks, uh, autocatalytic uh, um, systems in, in chemistry. Uh, you have used different kinds of mathematics and logic. I'd like to understand the, the kind of mathematics that you've used and why you used it. Well, mathematics has been used in, in an enormous number of areas in biology. There's a whole field of mathematical biology and theoretical biology. I, I, I too, have done it. So one of the areas that I, I've done are, are uh, making large network models of genes turning one another on and off, which is fundamentally an area of nonlinear dynamical systems. I happen to have done it with Boolean networks. The virtue of which is that there's no adjustable parameters. If you have continuous equations, there's indefinitely many parameters. So with ensembles of Boolean networks, you can ask for the generic properties of classes of systems. It's kind of a new statistical mechanics. It's not the, it's the, the uh, behaviors of one system, like uh, an ensemble of gas particles in a, a liter box. It's an ensemble of systems, and you look for the generic properties of the ensemble. Spin glasses do the same thing. So there you're looking at properties like the numbers of attractors and the size of attractors and the stabilities of attractors. And then you're trying to relate it Attra to... Attractors meaning a state to which... Uh, it's a subregion of the state space and the system flows to the subregion and stays there. It might be a steady state for continuous systems. It might be a limit cycle. It, it might be a, a chaotic attractor in a subregion of the space or quasi-periodic orbit in nonlinear... And where do you find these attractors? you find it in genetics? Do you find in the genetic uh, expression? The, the best guess now is that cell types are attractors of a genetic regulatory network. This was originally Jacob and Minot in 1961 and 1963. Then I invented ensembles of, of networks and found order and chaos and stability and criticality and scaling laws for the numbers of cell types and so on. So that's one area where math has been useful. Uh, about 1971, I published a paper on uh, the origin of life due to the emergence of autocatalytic sets. And so the, the core issue there, this is another case of uh, not taking the assumptions of the field seriously. Uh, at the time, everybody knew about DNA replication, and the standard hypothesis was that RNA and template replicating in RNA would be the basis of life. That's perfectly plausible, but it's not necessary. I got to where I got in a wacky way. I wondered, what if the constants of nature were a little different and we couldn't make nitrogen? You were in a universe without nitrogen. Uh, so then you couldn't make DNA. But imagine you could still make complex molecules and had com you know, chemical reactions. And I thought, what would you have to have to have life? Well, you'd have to have a set of molecules that catalyze their own formation uh, out of some simple building blocks. So I call that a collectively autocatalytic set. I did some numerical experiments in 71 that showed that they could exist. And by 86, I'd proved some theorems saying, fundamentally, if you have a compli complicated network of reactions uh, with some assumptions about who catalyzes what, for a sufficiently complicated chemical soup, you will spontaneously get the, the emergence of collectively autocatalytic sets. So that's now been looked at by lots of people. The, the theorems are fine. People have made collectively autocatalytic sets out of, out of DNA, out of RNA, and most importantly, out of proteins. Gonan Ashkenazi has a, a nine-peptide autocatalytic set in, in the Ben-Gurion. That means you do not need DNA and RNA to get molecular reproduction. That, that claim of the RNA world is, is false. It may be true, but you don't need it. Uh, so that's another area. So it's, it's, it's broader than just... Uh... I think that self-reproduction can be based on, on collective autocatalysis. Uh, Vim Hordick and colleagues has found, have found metabolic autocatalytic sets uh, in E. coli. Work is going on to see if autocatalytic metabolic sets can be found in other bacteria. I can't talk about it right now. I know the results, but it's confidential, but it's beautiful. Another area of mathematics that I've looked at, I, basically I stole from the physicists, they're called spin glasses. So I made what I call NK fitness landscapes, where there's uh, N genes, each in two possible alleles, and each gene is affected uh, by K other alleles epistatically. Uh, and it, it's a spin glass model where you get tunably rugged fitness landscapes. Uh, and that's a nice body of theory where one can get things like the number of, of fitness peaks uh, on, on such landscapes as you tune the ruggedness of landscapes by tuning K from low to high. 
So you go from a single peak landscape that's like Fujiyama to random landscapes. And there's all sorts of scaling laws for the number of peaks and the lengths of walks to peaks and how the dirt. And these landscapes are broadly what? They, they are the, the, the whole phenotype of the... Uh... Well, yeah. So Sewell Wright uh, invented the idea in 1932 of fitness landscapes. The, the, uh, the, the, the population genetics was being invented. The fundamental question uh, at that, that time was, could a slightly fitter allele uh, by natural selection invade the population. Uh, and, and Sewell Wright invented the idea of fitness landscapes. So a population is climbing on fitness landscapes. Mm -hmm. So basically a number of people have worked that, and I just took his idea and spin glasses, and the ideas of Eigen and Schuster of molecular evolution on, on uh, RNA and protein sequences and DNA sequences on landscapes, and, and apply that well, idea. What are the mathematics of that? I stole spin glasses from Phil Anderson, Anderson Edwards, and Sherrington and Kirkpatrick. They, were, they came in about 1972, a little after I did random Boolean nets. So spin glasses are, are real, real magnetic materials. They're disordered ma magnetic materials. And they have potential landscapes, straightforward physics potential landscapes, that are they can be fractal. They're very complex potential surfaces oh, that break ergodicity. So I stole the idea of NK of, uh, of, of spin glasses to make my models, the NK landscapes. Yes. So all they are for a physicist is N spins, for me, N genes with two alleles. And each, in my case, each allele makes a uh, fitness contribution that depends upon the alleles of the K other genes. And in fact, and that's the same thing as a spin glass for an energy contribution. And you get a fractal landscape. In physics, you go down in energy. In, in uh, biology, you go up in fitness. So it's the same thing, just turn the landscape up and down. Yeah. If you tune K, you tune the structure of the landscape from, if K is zero, it's a Fujiyama landscape with one peak. And if K is the maximum value, N minus one, you get a random landscape. And lots of people have proven theorems about walks on landscapes. Simon Levin and I proved the first statistical theorems about the numbers of peaks on landscapes. It's two to the N divided by N plus one. So that's that's nice. And the lengths of walks to peaks by fitter variant scales as uh, scales as log n, and the number of directions uphill falls by a constant fraction every time you step uphill. Uh, and that now all these are potentials, uh, and and then a few of them are actual. This is a description. This is a description of. What, how should I say this? It's a model of. This is a model of. Uh, uh, suppose you've got a thousand genes, right. and each gene can have two alleles, right. big A and little a, big B, little b. It's a model of the fitness of an organism with a haploid genotype right now, uh, having some combination of 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 uh, of, 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 of alleles, uh, one or zero at the end loci. And what you get is a, a fitness landscape that's like, like the mountains around the, over, over the Rockies. So I have to just say it a little more clearly. I, I have to say that you need the following. If I've got n, if I've got n uh, genes or n binary variables, there's two to the n states. I need the notion of which is what states are next to what states, and it's simply any state is is a, a binary vector length n. Its neighbors are all of those vectors that are identical to it except in one position. So zero, zero, zero is next to zero, zero, one, one. zero, one, zero, and one, zero, zero. You can map them onto the n-dimensional Boolean hypercube. Not for Eichen to draw, make a seven-dimensional Boolean hypercube. I can draw four. So now you've got a, a space with a neighborhood relationship. You have a fitness at each point. You can think of the fitness as a height over that space, and that's the fitness landscape. So it's on a discrete and it's not an n-dimensional Boolean hypercube. This is the discrete space. And as you tune k, you, you tune all kinds of things like the correlation structure of the fitness values on the landscape and the number of peaks on the landscape. And how as you walk uphill on the landscape, the number of directions uphill declines. It, it, it goes down for rugged landscapes by a constant fraction every time. So this is a really interesting case of usefulness of mathematics. In biology, we've used it for, for example, describing the evolution of, of, of molecules on, on molecular fitness landscapes, an idea introduced by John Maynard Smith and my Manfred Eigen. We've used it for thinking about the, uh, the evolution of, uh, 
of antibodies uh, in maturation of the immune response. Uh, uh, um, business people have taken it over to think about firms evolving on landscapes. It, it, we've used it to explain uh, uh, what are called learning curves in economics, where every time you double the number of airplanes you produce, the cost per airplane drops by a constant fraction. That turns out to be a generic property of these landscapes.